everyone, welcome back to One Cent Sports Cards YouTube channel. I am back today with another set guide and review, and this time it is for the Tobacco Era inspired set 2022 Tops Gypsy Queen. It's got a little bit of a steampunk vibe this year, which is ultra cool, but we gotta ask is this a great blast from the past set? What rookies are we chasing? How's the auto checklist? What are the best break teams? Well, there's only one way to find out, and that is with the One Cent Sports Cards 2022 Tops Gypsy Queen set guide and review. Let's do it. So it's been a busy release month for baseball card releases, and tomorrow we have another one. It is 2022 Topps Gypsy Queen. And what we're trying to do in this set guide and review is find out how good the set really is. How do we do that? Well, we use the exclusive one cent sensational set rating. So here's what we'll cover off on today in the 2022 Topps Gypsy Queen set guide and review. We're gonna start off at a really high level. I'll tell you the set highlights, what you'll be looking for. We'll go into the different buying formats, dig a little bit deeper, tell you what the key cards you're gonna be chasing, who the key rookies are. We'll cover off on all the parallels, the variations, the inserts and the autos. And I'm even gonna tell you which teams to target in breaks. I'll tell you six that I think would be a great buy and we'll use our new break cheat sheet to tell you how good all 30 teams are. So when you're buying into breaks, you know which teams to get and you know which teams to steer clear of. And that's what brings us to our one cent sensational set ranking where we find out how good 2022 Topps Gypsy Queen really is. And then we'll end it by telling you how good it stacks up against all of the baseball card releases that have been released so far in the 2022 collecting season. So I've got one more thing before we begin. If you like this content, be sure to throw over to first and hit that like button for me. It's the best way you can support the channel. And if you like these set guides and reviews, be sure to subscribe so you can see all of them as they release throughout the 2022 baseball card collecting season. And if you want to see them first, you got to hit that bell notification. Finally, if you haven't checked out my Patreon page yet, that's the best way to get into my breaks. That's another great way to support the channel. Over there, you can get monthly break credits, monthly packs, access to the Discord community to connect with other like-minded collectors in the hobby. And it is a great resource for anyone that enjoys collecting baseball cards. There's a link in the description below, so be sure to check that out. So here we go, 2022 Topps Gypsy Queen. First thing to know, it is a tobacco era inspired set with a little bit of a modern twist and this year it's got a major steampunk vibe. It is a set that is inspired by the late 1800s cigarette brand called Gypsy Queen and it is in its 12th year of production, started way back in 2011 and hasn't stopped since. This year, we have a 320 card base set checklist. Now, cards number 301 through 320 are all high number short prints of past great baseball players. There are 40 rookie cards in the base set checklist this year, and we have a 10 color base set parallel rainbow. There are three image variation subsets available this year, the City Connect, the Field of Dreams, and the Jackie Robinson Day and we will find this over in retail formats and hobby formats, so it's going to be available everywhere. Rookies, vets, and retired greats are featured in this. There are no prospects. And we get two new autograph sets for 2022. We get the Gypsy Gem Mini Autos and the Astrological Chrome Autos, which are new for 2022. Speaking of autos, you will get two autos per hobby box, and the good news is most of them are on-card autos. You also, in a hobby box, get one Gypsy Queen Chrome box topper pack, and that's going to have three Chrome variations of the base set in it. Autos are also available in those packs. And finally, rare autographed relics can also be found throughout the set. We'll cover off on more of those here in just a bit. 
So what are the different buying formats? We'll start with hobby. We can get a hobby case. There's gonna be 10 boxes in a case, 24 packs per box, eight cards per pack. That'll get you 1,920 total cards. And the current price on that is about $1,380. That gets you to a cost per card of 72 cents. And what you're guaranteed to get is 20 autos, 30 Gypsy Queen Chrome cards, and 10 high number short prints. If you don't got 13, 1400 bucks, go ahead and drop down to the hobby box. You're going to get 24 packs, eight cards per pack, 192 total cards. Your cost per card creeps up to 73 cents because they're going for about 140 bucks online right now. And you're guaranteed to get two autos, three Gypsy Queen Chrome cards, and one high number short print. But you can also find this in retail. We'll start with the retail box. Again, 24 packs per box, six cards per pack, 144 total cards. Current price on that is about 84 bucks online. Your cost per card drops down to 58 cents, but there are no guaranteed autos. You can also get a blaster box. There's seven packs per box, seven cards per pack, 49 total cards. Current price on that's gonna be 25 bucks. Your cost per card, 51 cents, and you are guaranteed to get seven green parallels per box. Those are exclusive to retail. You can also get a Val pack. There's going to be three packs in that plus one three card parallel pack. So that'll get you at six cards per pack, 21 total cards, cost you 15 bucks. Cost per card goes back up to 71 cents. And you'll also find individual gravity feed packs are available all throughout your major retailers. And finally, be on the lookout for additional formats such as blister packs. They've had mega boxes in the past. We'll probably see some of those throughout many retail locations. So what are the key cards we're going to be chasing in Gypsy Queen? Well, let's start with the rookies. We've got Vidal Brujan, O'Neal Cruz, Josh Lowe, Jake Berger, Shane Baz, Joe Ryan, Seth Beer, Josiah Gray, Ryan Valade, Reed Detmers, Jaron Duran, Gavin Sheets, Brandon Marsh, and of course, Wander Franco. So what are the parallels, autos, relics, variations that we're going to be looking for? Well, obviously the high number short prints, those are all of legends of the past. Think Ted Williams and stuff like that. Cards number 301 through 320. We also have a base set image variation and auto subset. Those are going to be all pretty much exclusive to the hobby format. We also have the image variation subsets, which I mentioned earlier. Those are going to be your Jackie Robinson Day, your City Connect, very collectible cards right there. And we have a new die cut card this year. It's the Crystal Gazing die cut. You can see the Boba Shet, what that looks like over there on the right. And new, we also have the GQ gem mini inserts and an auto subset that goes along with that. We have the astrological chrome autos. Those are new for 2022. And we have the GQ and GQ chrome autos. Those are the ones that you're going to find in most of the packs. The chrome versions are going to be in those box topper packs. We have the mini rookies autos, a very desirable auto subset that we are chasing there. And we have an auto patch book, some very beautiful cards. It's going to be tough to hit, but if you can get them, it is a great hit. There's the auto lineup cards returning again for 2022. Those are all going to be one of ones. And we have the pull-up sock auto relics. So another cool one there. So what are the base parallels that we will be looking for as we rip packs? Well, like I said, there is a 10 color rainbow and we'll start with the missing nameplate, just no name on the front of the card. We have the green parallels, which are exclusive to retail. They are not numbered. And then we get to our numbered ones. We've got the burnt umber to $3.99, an indigo to $2.50, a genuine turquoise to $1.99. Uh, $1 We've got blue to $1.50, mauve to $75, a black and white to $50, which is exclusive to the hobby format. And new, we have a red ruby foil numbered to 10 this year. And of course, our black one of one. We can see what the red looks like with the Jaron Duran over there on the right. So what are the different inserts we're chasing? Well, we'll start with the crystal gazing die cut. There's going to be 22 cards in that insert set with a small indigo green and black parallel rainbow. 
We have the Gypsy Queen Chrome. That's the three cards that you get in the box topper, only available in hobby boxes with the decent parallel breakdown that you can see on screen. We have the GQ Gem Minis, 30 cards in that subset. You can see what it looks like over on the right. That's gonna be a smaller card. That has a parallel breakdown of Indigo, Green, exclusive to retail, and Black, one of one. And then we have our variations. Let's cover off on those. We've got the City Connect variations, 25 cards in that subset. We have the Field of Dreams image variations. Those are gonna be cards from the Field of Dreams game that was played last year. So you're only gonna get White Sox and Yankees in that, but there are 10 cards and there are parallels of a black one of one. Then we have the Jackie Robinson Day variations, very desirable variation right here, 30 cards in that variation set and a parallel black one of one is also available. Now for the autographs. We'll start with the astrological chrome autos. We saw what that looked like on the last slide. There are 10 cards in that auto subset. They're each numbered to 99 and you can get a super fractor parallel. Then we have the GQ autos. These are the ones that you're gonna pull out of most of your packs. 89 cards in the auto set, and it has a large parallel breakdown of indigo, blue, black and white, and a black one of one. I believe there is also a green hobby that is available in there, and those would be numbered to 99 as well. There's also the GQ chrome autos. Those are in the box topper packs. 10 cards, each numbered to 25, and a super fractor one of one parallel. There's the GQ Gem Mini Autos, 15 cards in that set with a parallel black foil, one of one. We also have the Image Variation Autos. Those are the image variations of the base set checklist. There's eight cards in that one with a parallel breakdown of black and white, number to 42 for the Jackie Robinson Day and the black one of one. We also have the Mini Rookie Autos. Those are gonna be rookie autos on many cards, five cards in the set, parallel breakdown of black and white to 50 and black foil one of one. We also have autographed relics. Some of these are really awesome. We've got the autographed garments, eight cards in that set, each number to 50 and a parallel black one of one. The autographed patch book, which you can see what that looks like over on the right, just a really sweet card if you can pull it. 12 cards in the set, each number to 20, and you can get a black one of one parallel. And we also have the autographed lineup cards. 15 cards in that subset, and they are all one of one. Some big names in that auto checklist. Finally, we have the pull-up sock auto relics. Only two cards in that set. They're each numbered to 10, and you can get a parallel black one of one. So with all that being said, we now know what Gypsy Queen is offering us. It's pretty straightforward. Got a really nice design this year, but as we're buying into breaks, it's gonna be a very popular break product, probably at the half case and full case and even multi-case level. So the question becomes, who should we be targeting in breaks? Well, like I said, I'm going to give you six different teams. And we'll start with the best team, which I believe is the Tampa Bay Rays. Nothing new here, just a monster team in most 2022 sets because of Wander Franco. Here's what they're offering in Gypsy Queen. You've got 14 base, four rookie cards, 10 inserts, and 13 different autos. Here's who you're chasing. Wander Franco. Vidal Brujan, Josh Lowe, Randy Arozarena. Those are kind of the big names on the auto checklist. Plus, they've got all the different inserts. Just a very good team. If you get them in a random team, obviously, you're going to keep them. Going to be probably the most expensive team in a pick your team. But if you're looking for Wander, that's where you got to be. If you're looking for the most autos, that actually is the Tampa Bay Rays, but since we already covered off on them, go look at the Houston Astros and maybe the Mets. I'm going to highlight the Houston Astros here, but both the Astros and the Mets have 10 autos each. For the Astros, they have 10 base cards and five insert cards, and your chase there is going to be Jordan Alvarez, a very nice auto if you can get it. Chaz McCormick is in there. We've also got Michael Brantley autos. 
And then there's also Jose Altuve, not as valuable as it once was, but still a great player, even if he was wearing microphones. So the Houston Astros, if you're looking for autos, a great team to get, probably won't be a top three most expensive team. The Astros, I think, are going to return nicely on any break that you're in. So I would recommend to maybe keep them if you get them in a random team break or trade them for a team that you think is a little bit more desirable. But overall, I think you're going to get a nice return from the Houston Astros. If you're looking for the most rookie cards, we actually have four teams that are tied with three rookie cards apiece. Technically, again, the Tampa Bay Rays, they've got four rookie cards, but we covered off on them. So we're going to cover off on the Pittsburgh Pirates, and here's why. O'Neill Cruz is in there, which that is a big draw and a big rookie card that is in 2022 Tops Gypsy Queen. The Pirates, they're offering eight base cards, three rookie cards, two short prints, seven inserts, and four autos. Here's who you're chasing. O'Neill Cruz and Cabrian Hayes autos. Plus, you do get those Roberto Clemente and the Honus Wagner short prints that you can pull out of here. So the Pirates, they don't have a ton of cards compared to some of the other teams in here. But I think if you're chasing rookies, the Pirates, you'll probably notice that they're, you know, close to the top 10, maybe sneaking into the top 10 on pick your team auctions. But if you can get the Pirates at the right price and you're chasing O'Neill Cruz and maybe some Cabrian Hayes second year autos, I think it's a nice team. If you get them in a random team break i would recommend to keep them or if you don't get them maybe trade for them you could probably pull off trading for the pirates pretty easily in a random team break and although i don't think you're going to get a ton of cards back if you get lucky and hit that o'neill cruz auto or a cabrian hayes get some of those short prints i think they're okay maybe not the greatest rookie team but if you can get them at the right price i think you're doing good now if you're looking for a solid choice Look at the Angels. The Angels have a ton to offer. They've got eight base, two rookie cards, two image variation cards, eight inserts, and seven autos. But the autos we're chasing are big ones. Mike Trout, Shohei Otani, Brandon Marsh, Reed Detmers coming off a no-hitter. Brandon Marsh, Reed Detmers, obviously going to be rookie cards. If you get the Trout, if you get the Otani, this is going to be an expensive team. Probably top three most expensive in a pick-your-team break. But they're offering a lot in return. And they've got enough content and base cards and inserts and variations that I think you're going to do very well even if you don't hit one of those big cards. If you get them in a random team break, keep them, don't trade them, unless you can trade for the Tampa Bay Rays or something like that. The Yankees also a very nice team here, so maybe you trade for the Yankees. But overall, I think you keep the Angels in this because you got a shot at Trout and Otani and a few rookie autos. Just the Angels are a stacked, stacked team in this set. I'm also going to give you a sleeper. My first one is going to be the St. Louis Cardinals. They've got a surprising amount of content in the set. They've got 11 base cards, two rookie cards, one high number short print, six different variations, six inserts, and a high number of autos at eight. And the auto checklist, pretty good. We've got Dylan Carlson autos, Nolan Arenado autos, Yadier Molina autos. You've got the Jackie Robinson Day variations. They've got six different ones of those. So just a lot of different cards and a lot of different variations, parallels and stuff that you'll be looking for in the Cardinals. You can probably trade pretty easily for the Cardinals in a random team break. If you can pull that off, make the trade. In a pick your team break, the Cardinals are probably going to be hovering in the top 10, but maybe fall out of the top 10 here and there in regards to overall price in a pick your team break. If you can get them at a decent price, they're going to give you a solid return. We've got two rookie cards in there, the tons of different variations. If you're in a case break, you'll probably find a variation. At least one or two are going to be from the St. Louis Cardinals. Plus, we've got a good amount of autos here in eight. So my first sleeper going to be the St. Louis Cardinals. My second sleeper the Toronto Blue Jays. They have a ton of base cards in this. They've got 15 base cards, only one rookie card, but they also have seven inserts and a high number of autos again. And the auto checklist, good. We've got Vladimir Guerrero Jr., George Springer, 
Alec Manoa, who was off to a fantastic start in 2022. Just some very nice names there. A ton of different cards that you can pull out of here. A ton of different inserts, a high number of autos. Again, probably going to be kind of expensive because of the Vlad autos, but probably because he's fourth year now, you'll probably find that it's not one of the top five most expensive teams. So the Toronto Blue Jays, if you can nail them in a pick your team at a decent price, you're going to be doing well. If you get them in a random team break, keep them. Don't trade them. If you get a different team in a random team break and they open it up for trades, try and trade for the Blue Jays because if you hit one of those Vlad autos, it's awesome. You're going to get a ton of cards regardless because they have a high number of base cards in here. You can see they've got more base cards than any of the other teams I've listed. So the Toronto Blue Jays, who have not been a very good team in 2022 for breaks, a lot of that because Vlad autos have been kind of sparse. Here we get some. They're on-card autos for Vlad, so I would definitely target the Toronto Blue Jays as a second sleeper. So, you've now got my six recommendations, but how do all of the teams stack up? Well, we've got a break cheat sheet for you. I'm going to tier out the teams into a top tier, a middle tier, and a bottom tier. Let's start with the top tier. These are the teams that I don't think you can go wrong with. We covered off on Tampa Bay and the Angels. The Yankees, they've got a ton of different cards in this. They've got the Field of Dreams variations. So do the White Sox. The Boston Red Sox, they've got a ton in here. I've got my two sleepers in here as well, the St. Louis Cardinals and the Blue Jays. And surprisingly, the Mets have a ton of different content in here. You're looking for Pete Alonzo autos and stuff like that out of the Mets, but the Mets have a ton to offer in this set as well. So these are going to be my top eight teams. For the middle tier, these are going to be teams that are going to be kind of hit and miss, but they got enough content that if you get a little lucky, you'll probably find that they're not bad teams to have, but they're not going to hit every time. Some of the teams to call out here, the Cincinnati Reds, they have a decent amount of content in here. I, w I wouldn't be sad if I got the Reds in a random team break. The Dodgers, almost a top tier team in here. The San Diego Padres, who have not been a very good team in 2022, we finally get some Fernando Tatis autos in this set. The Atlanta Braves actually dropped down out of the top tier for this set. Not offering a ton on the auto front, but they do have a decent amount of cards. And the Twins come in a little bit better, almost a sleeper team here, so don't sleep on the Twins. And the Milwaukee Brewers, I, I would say the same thing there. For my bottom tier, these are the teams that I would recommend kind of steering clear of. If you hit them in a random team break, try and trade them away. Uh, the Indians offering, again, almost nothing. It is shocking how little the Indians have in this. Same with the Diamondbacks, just not very good. The San Francisco Giants actually drop out of the second tier. I would recommend steering clear of the Giants here in Gypsy Queen. The Orioles, just again, not a lot. Same with the Rockies, just not enough content for any of these teams to really deliver in a case break or something like that. So don't overpay for them. If you can get them at a rock bottom price, maybe, you know, throw a flyer out there. But overall, those are the teams I would stay away from. Let me know in the comments below what teams you're chasing and why. And if you like the break team cheat sheet, let me know in the comments below. Love to respond to all of your comments and love to connect with all of the members that are watching the videos. So let me know what you're doing with 2022 Tops Gypsy Queen. But now it's time for the one cent sensational set rating. What is it? Well, let me explain it real quick. First of all, it is the most in-depth rating system you're gonna find anywhere on the internet. What I do is I break the set down into 10 different categories, and each category is worth one to 10 points. Once we have all those points, we add them all up, and that's what gives us our final one cent sensational set rating score using the scale that you see below. What we'll also do is compare the 2022 Topps Gypsy Queen set with all the scores from the past couple years. Then we compare 2022 Topps Gypsy Queen to all of the other sets that have come out this year to see how it's stacking up against the competition this year. So let's dig right in. For our 10 categories, I'm going to start with the peel. 
And on Topps Gypsy Queen, I feel like there's a lot of appeal here. I'm going to give it a seven. Some investors will probably stay away from this set because it's a little bit more of a budget minded set and it's got a little bit of a higher production run. However, we do have on card autos here. We have some nostalgia, a very nice new design. And I think that because we get on card autos and it's a fun set that is established in the hobby, we've got to go ahead and give it a seven. For the base set checklist, I'm going to give it a six. I feel like it could be better. I feel like Tops this year is very much holding on for Series 2 to release some of the bigger names that have were called up or started on their team at the beginning of the MLB season. And I feel like we have a couple names that are missing. But we do have O'Neill Cruz. We've got Wander Franco. Because it is a 320 card set checklist, if you're a team set collector, you're going to find most of the stars on your team are featured in the set. So I go ahead and give it a six. For the auto checklist, I give it a seven. We've got some auto only rookies that you can find in this set. Some big names. We're not missing a lot. We've got Vladimir in here. We've got Tatis. You've got Wander. You've got Trout. You've got Otani. There are some big names. But because we do have 89 cards on the Gypsy Queen auto checklist, to be fair, there is some filler. But there also are some Hall of Fame autos, which are auto onlys. And we've got all of the different patches and stuff. So overall, it's a pretty good auto checklist for a budget-friendly set. For our inserts, parallels, and variations, I'm going to give it a 7.5. Variations are a fun, fun thing in this set to pull. I'm going to be interested. There was no mention of the bazooka backs, but I'm assuming that they're going to be back. That's another variation that we didn't even cover off on before. We've got the Jackie Robinson Day, the City Connect variations. We've got a decent parallel rainbow that isn't too big. It's only 10 colors. And we've got a very streamlined insert set with some new inserts as well. But we've removed some of the fluff that's been there in the past couple years so i like the inserts the parallels the variations this year i give it a 7.5 for the production run and pack odds again this is a budget-minded set they're going to produce a lot of it production runs on these sets this year have been up but this will not be produced at the same level that top series one or even tops heritage was so i'm still going to give it a three because you're going to see a lot of it but it's not as bad as top series one for the card quality, I'm going to give it a six. It's a little bit of a thicker card. It's got that nice nostalgic cardboard feel. Not a lot of gloss to it. I like Topps Gypsy Queen because of that. I go ahead and give it a six. And for historical value, some of the bigger autos, some of the patch autos, some of the books, they're going to carry a ton of weight. Some of your other autos, even if it's a rookie auto, aren't going to carry the same weight that maybe a flagship auto would, but they do carry a decent return on the secondary market. So I'm going to put it middle of the road right at five. For our cost value, and here's what that means. That's how much of a return do you get on each hobby box or blaster that you're buying? I believe that because you get the two autos and they are on card autos, you also get a variation. You get a high number short print in a hobby box. The return on this, you know, they're costing about 140 bucks per hobby box right now. The return on that, although I don't think you're going to get your return on every box, if you hit one of the bigger autos or a nice parallel, you hit a Gypsy Queen Chrome auto in the box topper or even some non parallel autos that are of bigger names you can get a pretty decent return not every box is going to be great and not every blaster box is going to be great again higher production run but i'm still going to give it a 5.5 i believe you get a decent return from gypsy queen for our artistic value this year has a very steampunk vibe to it and it is a big jump over what Gypsy Queen has looked like over the last couple years. I like the design. I like the fortune telling kind of astrological vibe that this whole thing has. And I believe some of the inserts look really nice with the die cuts. I love that they're doing the City Connect variations, a set you, that you kind of got to be with a little bit. Very cool designs. The autos look great this year. So I'm going to go ahead and give it an eight. And then we finally have our last one, which is collectability. How fun is the set to collect? Not necessarily invest in, but 
as part of the hobby. The hobby is about collecting. And this is a great set collector set. We've got a very challenging set to finish because of the high number short prints. It is a fun set to rip. We got a lot of different inserts and variations. It's fun to just rip and really look at the cards. The subtleties of the Jackie Robinson Day variations. You got to find the number 42 on the jersey. It does not call it out as a Jackie Robinson. So you got to be with the cards a little bit. We've got fun surprises. I'm assuming the bazooka backs will be back this year. So you got to look at the back of the cards. A very much a collector friendly set. Maybe not so much for the investors, but definitely for the collectors in the hobby. This is one that I would definitely have you look at. There's the nostalgic appeal. There's the tobacco inspired history of the set, which is really cool. And we've got a very cool design for 2022. So I go ahead and give it a seven. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to add up all of those scores. And that's what's going to give us our sensational set rating for 2022 Tops Gypsy Queen. And this year, Gypsy Queen tops out at a 62. So a low end, very good set. Gets hurt a little bit because of production run and the base set checklist, I think could be a little bit better. Missing a few rookie names that I was hoping would be in the set, but they're not in there. But overall, a low end, very good set. I like Gypsy Queen because of the on-card autos. I like it because of the nostalgic feel. And for this year, I really, really love the design and I love the streamlined approach where we got rid of a few of the fluff inserts. We've got a little bit more variations. We have a tight parallel rainbow. So overall, I go ahead and give it a low end, very good score of 62. However, last year, 2021 Tops Gypsy Queen was all the way up at 72. I believe that they had a better auto checklist last year and they also had a better base set checklist. The production run was a little bit lower than it is this year. And so that's reflected in the score. In 2020, it also scored a 72. And again, that's because the set lower production run had a very nice auto checklist. The 2020 rookie class was a great rookie class. But 2022, although it comes down a lot in a score this year, which is discouraging, we still are in the very good range, just a little bit lower, longer production odds. And overall, I think it's just a little bit of a weaker set than the last two years. So how does 2022 Tops Gypsy Queen rank amongst all of the other sets that have come out this year? Well, it comes in fifth out of 10 with its 62 score. Still a very good set. We have a couple other new entries that I did not do full on set guides and reviews for. That would be Panini Diamond Kings. That comes in at a nine with the 53. Some great autos out of that set, but still not really a great set to look at, kind of an average set. And we also have Top Sterling, which released this week, a very high-end set, an auto-only set. I give it a 61, just not a ton of appeal there for a lot of mass collectors being that boxes are a thousand bucks. And although you've got a very good production run, all the cards are numbered 25 or less, there's just not enough there to really get us into the mass appeal so tops Sterling comes in at six leading the way. We've got Bowman baseball still in a comfortable lead at 78 and rounding out our top three. We still have tops inception and tops tribute. So let me know guys, what you think of 2022 tops gypsy queen. Are you getting in? Are you staying away? What teams are you chasing? What cards are you chasing? Comment below. Let me know. I love to respond to all the comments that are worth responding to. And as you're out there in the wild, I hope you have great luck finding Gypsy Queen and getting some fire when you rip those packs. And until next time, be sure to be good to your family, be good to your friends, be good to your neighbors, and most importantly, take care of yourself. Thanks for watching. We'll do it again soon.